I've never done this probably I, I, in all my years of uh, preaching, and I've never uh, done this before, but I, I, I want to do this today. Uh, I want to recommend a secular book. I've never done this, but I, I, I heard advertised quite a bit, and I listen to audio books, and uh, I, I, I was listening to Bill O'Reilly's new book on killing the SS. I wish everybody in this church would either get that book, read it, or listen to it. I'm going to tell you what, it, it, will, it will move you. I, I don't know, I've really been moved by that book. It's about the atrocities of the Holocaust. And these are uh, they're about them trying to catch those that escaped after the fall of Germany. But in the, in the book, it's got where well, they're having these trials of these uh, uh, war criminals. And it's got the uh, testimonies of these people that were in uh, the ones that s survived the concentration camps, and I don't—I don't see how you can keep from reading it or listening to it without weeping. The 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 uh, heartlessness and ruthlessness of those uh, criminals, and uh, don't tell you—you you listen to me, listen to me, good. Uh, they're not even teaching that a lot in school anymore. And, uh, you know, what is it? What war, war in 1945? Here we are. What's well, going on all these years? I don't know if anybody... We don't have very many li that's here that's alive today that was living when World War II ended. How many? Sister Veda... Yeah, they, they were children when World War II ended. And uh, so it passes in time. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't think it can happen again, you are sadly mistaken. And, and I thought of two things, of two things that I thought of when I listened to this. And... Uh, I don't know when I'm, I'm stirred. It's got me stirred. Two things. One is the viciousness of the crime and the heartlessness of these people that they felt free to kill them because they had deemed them they weren't human. They had deemed them they were not human. And... Uh, Say, well, that'll never happen in the United States of America. In the state of Virginia, the governor of the state of Virginia talked about a baby being born and said, well, then they'd try to get with the mother and the father and the doctors, make the child as comfortable as they could to figure out whether he's going to exterminate the baby or not. And in the state of New York, they, they passed legislation to abort the baby up, up to the time that the woman was in labor. And when the governor signed the bill, the legislature stood and applauded. Applauded. The murdering of babies. Now, if you think that's going to end with babies, you've got another thing coming. Because they're going to deem elderly to be expendable. That's the truth. Because they're looking at them less than human. I'm going to tell you what, church, you better be getting ready to get out of here. This thing is not, oh, 
This thing is not getting ready to get any better. It's getting worse. And there's a lot of theology that's going around in even Pentecostal churches today. And they're, they're calling people world changers. You're not going to change this world. You may have a limited effect of people that you are around. But amen. But we're not trying to make this world better. We're trying to get people ready to get out of this world. Because this world is headed for judgment. And nothing's going to stop it. Amen. There may be some prayers that delay. I don't know if that's even possible or not. I'm very doubtful of that. But uh, I want to be ready. And I don't ever make an endorsement on a book like that. But uh, uh, I, I wish I'd read a little earlier. If I'd got a little earlier and we'd had time, I'd made it mandatory for the children in our school to have, to have read it before they graduated. I'm telling you, it is a, 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 it's just needful. Some philosopher said years ago, and, uh, and so sad, this was on the back wall of Jonestown. Anybody, anybody remember Jonestown? This was on the back of the Jonestown commune. They that forget history are doomed to repeat it. Well, now let's get to the lesson. Amen. What's that? Killing the SS. Killing the SS by Bill O'Reilly. Killing. He, 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 he writes a lot of historical books. The Killing of Lincoln, Killing of Kennedy. Uh, he's got several historical books. And, uh, and they're not fiction. They're, and it's not fictionalized. It's not a fiction book. It would it have been wonderful if it was fiction. But very real. And uh, uh, I, I listen. I listen while I travel. And I had it on as I was uh, uh, on my way to Sunday school this morning. And they're talking about getting those babies' shoes, piles of those babies' shoes, trainloads of babies and children, babies like this, getting their, piling them up and getting their shoes. And the uh, the uh, uh, the path that they took to go to take them has made them undress men, women, and all. And they're telling them they was taking them to showers, and the place was called Journey to Heaven. And as they marching them into the gas chambers, then young men like this was elected Jewish young men to haul those bodies out and throw them into a big open ditch. Little babies and baby shoes and my, my. Oh, yeah, I said two things that I was called to deal is the atrocities of uh, those German people that did that, the horde. And the, these war criminals are on trial, and there's no, there's no remorse whatsoever. But I'm hearing in my ear, I'm hearing in my ear, so I'm listening to this. As Jesus is standing there, and those Jews are standing there with clenched fists, screaming, let his blood be upon us and on our children. I don't think they had any idea. They had any idea. That's when backsliders leave the church. You don't have any idea because you not only affect you, 
But you're affecting generations to come. You're affecting your children and your grandchildren and maybe your great-grandchildren. Amen. Uh, can we take a moment? Let's take this man. God in Jesus' name. Lord, I love you. I praise you. I magnify you, God. Oh, I appreciate you, Lord. I magnify your name. Oh, God. If you got your Bibles, I'm going to try this again. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect. It means complete. Finish you up. Ain't you glad he that started us is able to finish us? And every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, we're so thankful for Your... Thank You for Your precious blood. God, they were screaming, let His blood be upon us and on our children. They were saying that in in... In, in judgment and in vengeance and in wrath. But Lord, we're saying, let your blood be upon us. Not in vengeance and in wrath, but oh God, in cleansing and in forgiveness and in mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you went to Calvary in our stead. You took our place that we didn't have to go. We appreciate it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. If Brother Dallas would get me, I'm going to try to start there again at 9 and 12. 9 and 12 of, uh, of Hebrews, do verse 28. And uh, I'm not going to do a lot of redoing. Uh, Brother Adam. Hebrews 10 and through 19. Bow your head and pray with me again. One more time. We, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Oh, we magnify you, God. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Oh, we adore you and worship you. Magnify your Savior. Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. This verse just keeps jumping out at me. So, I, so I'm going to follow this. I'm going to follow this. Hold your finger there, Brother Dallas. And look in 1029 of Hebrews. How much sore punishment? Suppose ye shall be used. How much sore punishment? Suppose ye. Yes? Shall ye be taught worthy? Yes. This totally does away with the doctrine of unconditional eternal security. These folks trodden underfoot the Son of God and counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. He was sanctified, an unholy thing, and had done despite the Spirit of grace. Can you imagine? It's hard for me.
to imagine how anybody that had been purchased by his blood, washed his sin, washed away in that glorious cleansing, that feeling that is unlike any feeling in this world when you get cleansed, clean, purified, sanctified by his blood. Oh, I've known folks that were running from the law. Guilty of heinous sins and iniquities. I mean so, so wicked that uh, you really wouldn't want to have been in a building with them. And, and horrible, horrible sins. Ungodly sins. And... and uh, while I'm dealing with this, Brother Adam, pick up 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. I'm just going to move in the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I feel this. What does it say, Brother Adam? The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes, be not deceived. Looky, looky. You can't stay like you are and go to heaven. You can't live in sin and go to heaven. If death catches you unaware, if Lord have mercy would fix it, which it won't fix it, but if Lord have mercy would fix it, you're not guaranteed you're going to have time to say, Lord, have mercy. Don't be deceived. Sin was kicked out of heaven by, by, by Lucifer and, and those angels that fell. It ain't getting back into heaven through me or you. And the only remedy for sin is the blood of Jesus. God told Israel in Exodus, I believe, 13 and 12, it said, and the blood shall be to you for a token. It was the blood that was going to take them out of Egypt land into the promised land. And the only way you're going to reach the promised land today is you got to go through that blood, that blood. Got to have that blood applied to your life. Nah, be not deceived. What does it say? Yes. 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 Not going. Not going. Not going to heaven shacking. Not going to heaven committing adultery. Not going to heaven fornicating. Not going to heaven being a homosexual. Not going to heaven being a thief. Not going to heaven living in sin. Not going to heaven. Death's not going to clear anything. Said whether well, they die in a bad wreck, that ain't going to clear anything. Die of a horrible disease, that's not going to clear anything. Amen. They that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. If you want to, well, praise God. If you want to get out of this, if you want to get out of this world, save. If you want to get out of this world, guaranteed. If you want to get out of this world and have a safe landing on the other side, you can't die in that condition. Amen. I come to tell you today, you don't have a guarantee for tomorrow. You ain't got a guarantee that you'll even last through today. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Hell is filled with tomorrows. I'm going to get right tomorrow. I'm going to get right down the road. I'm going to get took care of by and by. 
But the death angel comes knocking on their door and they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Boy, that's a bad bunch of folks. Read them, read them again, Brother Adam. No, you're not. The unrighteous. Yeah, be not deceived. Fornicators. You can't whore around and enter the kingdom of God. And fornicators include those that fornicate without anybody being with them. You can fornicate on your phone now. You can fornicate on your computer now. But they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither idolaters. Amen. Some folks, success becomes their idolatry. The sports world has become idolatry to this wicked world. And the entertainment world has become an idol. Amen. Any, any, anything that has more priority in your life than God and the house of God and the work of God and the church of God become, people don't build an idol of gold and wood and stone, but, amen, but their idols are different. Things. It's success and education. Well, glory to God. Climbing the ladder. And I'm going to tell you, idolaters shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Adulterers, who are adulterers? Whosoever shall put away his wife and marrieth another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away, does commit adultery. Adulterers shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And it said effeminate. Glory to God. Amen. Pretty boys. Amen. Swishy boys. Amen. Boys. Amen. The uh, transgenders uh, that don't know they're a boy today and a girl tomorrow. And maybe a, maybe a donkey. Amen. Or a cow. Amen. Or a baboon the next day. Well, praise God. But I want you to know you are what you're born with. If you look south, you'll find out what you are. You was born that way. You can't change that. Well, praise God. Well, that's a little blunt. Well, uh, sometimes you need to get a little blunt. That's right. Yes, sir. There ain't no such thing as a trans transgender. I was a man in a woman's body for nine months. Amen. And then she had me. Well, glory to God. Yeah. And that's the only way you can be a man in a woman's body. You ain't a man in a woman's body. You're a pervert. You're a low down, sorry, stinking pervert. You need to get that devil cast out of you. Well, glory, if you're a boy, if you're a man, and another man turns you on, said, hey, man, our homosexuals welcome in this church. They sure are. We got a special place for them. It's called an altar. It's called a baptistry tank. It's called the Holy Ghost. And when you get that, you'll come up out of there with your desires changed. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Child molesters. What could be so goofy, weird, strange that some adult would want to have sex with a little kid? They ought to hang you up by your, you know what? And stay there till you bleed to death. Child molesters. There ought to be death sentences for child molesters. Amen. Hurt kids and mark kids. Cause them physical and psychological baggage that carry the rest of their life. Heinous sin. Well, glory to God. Heinous, wicked people. 
effeminate abusers of themselves with mankind. Them are homos. Well, glory to God. Well, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. But just like divorce and remarriage has become acceptable in the Pentecostal church, you give it time, and John and Bill will be sitting on the same seats in a Pentecostal church with their arms around each other because they love each other. Well, glory to God. You don't love them. You lust them. You say, well, now you all will go to jail. Well, take me to jail. All right. Maybe somebody here will bail me out. I ain't gonna start, I ain't gonna stop preaching against queers and lesbos. Right. And if that offends you, there's probably 40 churches around here where they ain't gonna say nothing about nothing. Because all they all they want is whatever money's gonna come in that plate. And they, above you, a lot of these preachers, if you had punched them in the nose when folks were showing up for church, dollar sign to show up in their eyes. They look like a cash register. Well, glory to God. Because they ain't caring about your soul. Somebody tell you you can live in sin and stay in sin. Well, glory to God. They don't love you. No, sir. I love you. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. I want to see you say, I want to see the homosexual say. That's yeah. right. Yes, sir. I ain't got a, I ain't got a faith for child molester. You say somebody have, have more faith than me. Amen. So what you going to do? I'm going to watch and pray. Amen. Somebody gets delivered from homosexuality. I may wait a while before I hug them. Well, glory to God. Amen. I can't hear you. Well, I'm offended. Well, good. Good. We're living such a snowflake day. Everybody wakes up. Everybody wakes up every morning. What can offend me today? Well, I, 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 I took care of that. Glory to God. I love you. I don't want to see nobody go to hell. My God, please don't go to hell. Please don't die lost. Please don't go into eternity. Eternity is forever. It ain't never going to end. The worm died not, and the fire is not quenched. That's a wicked bunch of people. Abusers of themselves with mankind. Go ahead. Thieves. Covetous, drunkards. That, hey, that's drunk on Miller Highlight. That's drunk on Johnny Walker Red. That's drunk on cocaine. That's drunk on heroin. And that's drunk on the stuff you get down at the prescription store. Worst drug pictures in America today is, is not the guys in alleys. They wear white coats. Well, glory to God. They got society. It's zonked out. That's why folks can come to Pentecostal church. They don't cry. They don't weep. They don't feel any conviction. They don't feel any remorse. They're zonked out. They're zonked out. Holy Ghost can't touch them. Spirit can't touch them. Conviction can't touch them. They're drunk. They just soon have cocaine and heroin in their veins. Is all that junk. Well, praise God. I'm not trying to tell anybody not to take what the doctor gives you. But you got to watch these doctors. They're getting a kickback. I forget how many thousands. Thousands. Thou are you hearing me? Thousands. Whole cities, if you'd put them all together, are dying a year from op opioid deaths. 
Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. But I'm going to tell you what, no drunkard. Are y'all hearing me? No drunkard. No revilers. Or extortioners, that's crooks, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Well, glory to God. This is a little different Sunday morning. But I'm preaching to you this morning. Shall inherit the kingdom. That's a bad bunch of folks, Sister Terry. You look at that. That's a bad bunch of people. Wouldn't you hate to be surrounded by a bunch of people like that? Well, what does the next verse say? That's what you was. Ooh. Choir sang, there's no one so dirty that his blood cannot make worthy. <laughs> Woo. It'll even cleanse an old Vietnam vet, won't it? Yes, <laughs> sir. I don't know if you drank or not. Did you drink? Uh, oh, sister. Sister. Uh, she said all day, every day. I had to. Look at all that junk you saw over there. That's hard to live with. We're not made to live with that. All day, every day. Just to be. <laughs> Woo. Then that blood and that delivering power of the Holy Ghost cleansed it all. Glory to God. Glory to God. Got any dope heads in here? Anybody here that confess you as a, you as a dope head? Is you a dope head? Come on, stand up here. Dope head. Dope head. I don't want to embarrass you. And a, and a jailbird. Yes, sir. Man's a dope head and a jailbird. Such were some of you. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Lord. We don't ever look at this man and think about a dope head right. or a jailbird. That's right. That never crosses my mind. Thank except you, when I'm using him like this. Such were. You ain't a dope pet. Hallelujah. You ain't a jailbird. It's not even on your record. <laughs> That's right. Woo! It's not even on your record. Are you hearing me this morning? It's not even on your record. Hallelujah. AA can't do that. NA can't do that. I'm glad for any good they do. Yes. Read, Adam. You're washed. You're sanctified. You're just justified means to be forgiven as though you never did it. I mean, it's not just forgiven, Sister uh, Samuel. It's it's totally expunged. Now, in the old, in they didn't have erasers in the uh, back then. So what they done when when you had a record, they would take ink and go over your record and blot it out with ink where you couldn't read it. I was preaching years ago in Cincinnati, and I'm a preaching, and I, I, I'm preaching. And while I'm preaching, the Lord asked me a question: "What color is sin?" And I'm, 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 you know, I'm trying to answer in my head while I'm a preaching, you know. And I say to the Lord in my head, I say, "Black." It come back. Mm -mm. Trying to preach and said, Lord, why don't you talk to me when I ain't a preaching? You know? <laughs> I'm 
preaching him. And he asked me again, what color is sin? And that scripture jumped out at me. Give me Isaiah 118. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Your sins be as what? And what? Yes. Red like crimson. Woo! And while I'm in the middle of preaching, it hit me. When you drop that red sin in that red blood... You can't find the sin for the blood. Oh. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, God in heaven. I'm going somewhere. I'm moving all this around to get somewhere. All right, back to Corinthians. Back to where we were. Such were some of you, but you are washed. You are sanctified. And you are justified, but God's got a method. It's a twofold method. Jesus said, John 3 and 5, Verily, verily. I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. First John 5 and 8, for there are three that bear witness in the earth, the blood, the water, and the Spirit. And these three agree in one. I tell you how you get the blood. You get the blood in the water and in the spirit. Jesus, amen. Hebrews 9, 22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Luke 24, 47, and that re repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So you go to Jerusalem, and in Acts 2, 37, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He didn't say, join the church of your choice. He didn't say, shake the preacher's hand. He didn't say, walk the aisle. He didn't say, repeat the sinner's prayer. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Uh, back to where you was, brother. Thank you. You're going, you're going good. But you are washed. But you are sanctified. But you are justified. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus. You got to get in the name. Ain't nobody sanctified. The name went down in the water. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name is the power. When that preacher said, Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When that preacher said, done got his feet well, and he's doing good. Amen. Turn around here. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> that preacher said, Brother Eddie, upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And he sticks him under water, and he brings him back up. His sins is gone as far as the east is from the west. The power of the blood takes place when you pronounce the name in baptism. Right. Yes, sir. Acts twenty two sixteen said, Arise and be baptized. Wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Hebrews 10 said, Having your bodies washed with pure water and your conscience cleared by the sprinkling of the blood. Woo! When your body's washed with pure water in baptism, amen, God sprinkles that conscience with your blood. And you've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. 
That's the plan. That's the plan. But now we're back to 10. And what? No, 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 no. The one you read. Was it 29? Where was it? Go ahead. 1029. Yes. How much sure punishment? This is what, listen to me, this is what a backslider does. This is what every backslider does. Every, every backslider, without exception, this is what they do. They take that blood wherewith they were sanctified. They counted an unholy thing. And on the way out of the church, on the way out of the church, they wiped their feet. On the blood of Jesus Christ, on the way out the door. Every backslider without it. Well, I didn't mean every backslider without it. Without exception. Well, I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't thinking about that. When you turn your back on the blood that was shed for you, that was applied to your life through the new birth, And one of my little nieces and nephews, I love them to death. But one of them, if I seen one of them walking on my coat, I'd slap the living daylights out of them. If Mama said something, I'd slap them too. I mean, that, you know, stuff costs too much to, cost too much. But you know what? When you can walk walk on top of it, then... Where we, you count it, count the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and done that which is despite the spirit of grace. Everyone that loses out with God, everyone loses out with God, walks over conviction. Walks over conviction preaching. Walks over the Holy Ghost wooing them. Walks over saints praying for them. If they got a praying mama, they walk over their mama's prayer. You got a praying companion, they walk over their companion's prayer. Got a praying pastor, they walk over the pastor's prayer tonight. <laughs> I got things I want to do. It means more to me than that blood wherewith I was sanctified. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. That prodigal son, he come up to his dad and said, I want you to give me all that's coming to me. Why don't you give it to me? Give it to me. Son, you, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I want it right now. Not waiting. I want it right now. Dad, well, it's yours. It would have been yours down the road, but there, there it is. And, uh, Prodigal son 
leaves the house. Family's never the same. There's an empty chair at the table. They can't go and eat one meal without it reminds them there's an empty chair at the table. They could hear news about the boy. Finally, the Bible said he wastes. He wastes. That's what happens to folks that lose out with God. Years ago, we used to sing a song. I'm sure y'all heard it. Wasted years, wasted years. Oh, how foolish to go on. Darkness and fear turn around, turn around. Our God is calling. He's calling you from a life of wasted years. He wasted, wasted all of his substance, riotous living, having a high old time, kicking up his heels, no thought of down the road, just, just living in the now. But somewhere you hit bottom. Life will see that you hit bottom. There he is. Joined himself to a far country. Got out and feeding the hogs. This boy was a Jew. He couldn't even touch a hog. Down there feeding the hogs. Anybody ever been around a hog pen? Years ago when we lived in uh, Indiana, my wife and I looked at a house to buy. It was a beautiful home. And we'd been out there with the, with the uh, real estate agent two or three times. I just couldn't figure out. You know, the price was, the price was, it was a new home, and the price was way down. And Boy, we loved it. The yard was pretty out on a beautiful road. And uh, so we was making that one last trip out there, just me and her. We done decided, boy, this is going to be it. We get out of the car and the smell. Boy, that smell. I said, what is that? It was horrible. It was so bad you couldn't hardly stay in the yard. We got in the car. We never went down that part of the road. About a half mile down the road was a hog farm. You know what? That house was too high. It wasn't cheap at all. But this guy was a Jew in the hog pen. And the Bible said that he was so hungry. He would have, he would have ate the junk that they was feeding the hog. While he's down there smelling that manure, hungry, something clicks on in his head. The Bible said he came to himself in the hog pen. He came to himself in the hog pen and said, you know what? The servants in my father's house, they're doing better than this. It's going to be tough. I'm in a foreign land. And I'm going to make that long old journey. Imagine the whole time he was walking, he was thinking, they won't have me. Daddy won't have me. Family won't have me. Debauched. Demoralized. Inheritance gone. 
name gone, reputation gone. And he's Man, he gets a curve in the road and sees the house up ahead. Sees the house up ahead. You, you come walking this way real slow with your head down. Came walking up the road. But there's no gray-haired dad that's sitting on the porch. He'd been waiting and praying this whole time. Bible said he runs out. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to come home. He said, I'm not worthy to be called a son. Just let me be a son. He said, I know. Kill the fatty calf. Strike the band up. That which was lost is found. And that which was dead is alive again. Oh, oh, oh. will you bow your head, saints? Will you stand with me? In this Sunday morning service, Racing Apostolic Church, 2019 of February, the bride is saying, Come. Spirit is saying, Come. You don't have to leave this place in the same condition you can. But you can leave here clean, sanctified, justified, part of God's house. Your place is still at the table. <laughs> Saints, will you pray with me just a minute? And I'm going to get ready to... I'm not going to linger. I've done... I've done gave you everything that I have. Y'all know this is totally out of character on a Sunday morning. I'm not picking on you because you're here. God knows that's not so. But the Lord has directed this service. He's calling you and you and you. <laughs> I don't want to be guilty of walking on his blood, trodden on his blood, counting it an unholy thing. These altars are open. If, if you feel like coming and praying, we've got folks that's in this house that were backsliders. The ratio of backsliders getting back to God is extremely low. Not very many backsliders make it back. Why, I don't know. I have no answer for that. But we've got backsliders in this house that did what I preached today and went out of the Father's house and done their own thing. But when they made it back, the blood was still there. There were saints there that pray with them. <laughs> there was a Holy Ghost there that would renew them. And it's open today. You don't have to leave undone. Just another moment. It's all we're going to wait. Nobody's going to come talk to you. Nobody's going to. No, no, no. 
this is the invitation. You either accept this or you're going to be without. This is the invitation. Nobody's going to embarrass you. But do you, want, do you really want to die in your sins? Do you really want to go to hell? Are you really happy doing what you're doing? Holy Ghost has got you here this morning. God's got you in his sights. Sights right on you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Sing it again, brother. My, my. Your blood flow red. 